My name is Gordon Goldsboro of the Manitoba Historical Society. And I'm Morgana Malian, a local historian and researcher. Together, we're teaming up to learn more about the rich history of this province. And explore heritage sites that are definitely off the beaten path. This is Hidden Manitoba. In this episode, we're visiting Fort Ellis, near St. Lazar. So I found quite a few books here that give a lot of descriptions and talk about Fort Ellis. Built in 1831 at Beaver Creek, Fort Ellis was a Hudson's Bay Company trading post. Named after Edward Ellis, a British merchant and investor in the HBC, the fort was an important link to a number of trails for cross prairie travelers, serving as a major stopping point on the Carlton Trail which ran from the Red River Colony to Fort Edmonton. This book, The Assiniboine Basin, which was written by Martin Cavanaugh, includes several excerpts from people who had gone to Fort Ellis and they're describing their experiences when they arrived for the first time. On Sunday morning, the 30th of October, 1870, we reached a high bank overlooking the deep valley through which rolled the Assiniboine River. On the opposite shore, 300 feet above the current, stood a few white houses surrounded by a wooden palisade. Around, the country stretched far on all sides in magnificent expanses. This was Fort Ellis, near the junction of the Quapel and Assiniboine Rivers, 230 miles west from Fort Garry. After an hour and 40 minute drive from Brandon, I'm arriving at the site of Fort Ellis, near the town of St. Lazar. I'm meeting Marcel Fouillard, whose family, until recently, owned the land where the fort once stood. He's agreed to help me interpret the site and there isn't much left to see on the surface other than a stone cairn that was erected in the 1930s. The Beaver Creek House would be to the east here because this is true north, it would be to the east that way and they said they could see the mouth of the Beaver Creek entering the Assiniboine so that's why they call it Beaver Creek House. I see. And then from there they moved to about two and a half miles west of here and it's kind of a sandy area, but there's really good spring and that's where they built. Okay. And that's what they called uh, Fort Ellis One. I see. And then when they had a, that fort was destroyed, they moved to this site, which is just like you just go straight south of here about a couple hundred yards. Uh. And that's where the last fort was. Uh, I see. Right, so, so essentially the fort was directly south yeah. uh, of, the, of the monument. Yeah. Huh. If you see any pictures of the Fort Ellis, or drawings, there's no trees on the either side of them or? That's right, I've only seen a couple of, of pictures of Fort Ellis, but they just absolutely show a, just an open prairie. Yeah. Nothing like this at all. The other thing is, you know, here, like you can see through the trees, the, the river down in the valley, but you don't see very much of it. You can imagine though, if you took all these trees away, yeah. boy, you'd just get a spectacular view of the river valley. Finding the exact location of the fort's main buildings proves to be quite difficult from the ground. You were saying that the fort would have been somewhere in this Yeah, if we area. walk here, we might be able to find the, uh, um, the furrow here, so. Yeah, see, the grass is growing in here, but this is roughly around here where the factor's house was. So, because at one time you could, uh, and, and it's taken quite a while, but there was areas probably where the yeah. chimney and that was, yeah. and it, uh, you know, nothing grows sometimes. That's right. Well, that's right. You can even see there's like little hills here. There's one right, I'm standing on top of right here. <laughs> From above, it's still hard to tell what's there. We think that what we can see probably dates from more recent activities. Fort Ellis has more surprises in store. Marcel informs me there are many graves scattered around the site, and he shows me what he believes is the fort's cemetery. There's a few graves over to our right here, and there's some in here, but it's all been grown in and that. So this is this is all in the cemetery right yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like there's uh, some there, 
And you'll see there's part of a headstone over here. Oh, indeed. And a few here, another one here. So, but you know that you're looking at stuff that's probably uh, over 200 years old now. Right, so. absolutely. Fort Ellis is an important part of the fur trade history of Western Canada. It was also a part of the new phase of the history of Western Canada. Many of the settlers who were heading out across the prairies would stop there on their way west. It's exciting to see the former site of Fort Ellis and I'm really happy that I had an opportunity to visit.